Hello, hello, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. So it is our Friday wrap up this week. Yay, and TGIF. we have special guests. This is Who? my this is my mother. Oh. My mother. And uh, for those of you who don't know, she's the uh, one of the pastors on staff at Cornerstone Church. And yeah, she teaches about parenting. I'm sorry, I, parenting, marriage, women, music. What don't you speak about? Everything involved in a woman's life. <laughs> there Everything. are limits. There, there are limits. Yeah. Okay. So we've been having our own conversation going over the notes this <laughs> week and really um, having a good time wrapping this up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to we're gonna wrap this up and kind of talk, kind of hear from someone else's perspective on, on maybe some tools or tidbits that's worked for them. So let me just quickly recap. This week we talked about um, our relational audit, our spheres of influence and doing a relational audit on our own lives. So first at the very center of our life, we have us and God. That's the most important. Yes. There's nothing more important than that. That is the only relationship that will get you through, pull you through, guide you, help you to be a better mom, a better wife, a better friend, a better mother, all those things. So we, um, we really need to keep God at the center. And we talked about that on day one, about how to do that, how to keep him first, how to have a routine with him and how to just do the same thing over and over again, because that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. Getting off track, getting yourself back on. It's just life. And then um, day two, we talked about the, uh, the next layers of the spheres of influence. So we talked about here's our inner circle with you and God. And then the next circle around that is our inner circle of friends and people. These are your family members, your immediate family members, like the people you live with, the people that have direct influence on your everyday life. You see them the most out of anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, the next is your close friends. These are still really good friends. You pick them, you choose them. Um, you're close to them. You don't live with them, though. Sometimes they don't always tell you what you need to hear. They tell you what you want to hear. So that's kind of the difference between our really our inner circle and our close circle. Mm -hmm. Then we have our familiar circle, which is probably people you see at church once a week or baseball games once a week, your baseball mm -hmm. team moms. That's my life right now. <laughs> you see them uh, once a week. And so you know a little bit about them, not very much, mostly what you see, right. um, mostly Facebook, mostly those <clears throat> things, but not as much detail. Um and then we talked about our acquaintances. So those are like everybody else that we they, we recognize their face, maybe know their name, maybe know them from Facebook, but that's it. Um, and then don't forget that oftentimes what starts out as an acquaintance can end up being a really good friend. Sure. So that it's not that they don't mean anything. It's just that they haven't entered into the levels, the deeper levels of the relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we talked about values, putting a value to these different layers and understanding um what we value about these layers of friends, what what means the most to us about these layers of friends, what values do we share? You know, my inner circle of friends, we pray together. I can just text them like one word and these are, this is, the people in this category are the people that I pray with the most. Um, probably my close circle. My inner circle is me and my husband who sees all the nitty gritty details that I don't want him to see. <laughs> I don't get to choose what he sees. He just sees it all. Um, and my, my kids, you have to remember that you have a relationship with your kids too. Your kids are absolutely picking up on if they're living with you, they're picking up on the details, whether you're sharing them or not. That's right. Um, and so you're having a relationship with them. And then um, your familiar friends, you might not have as much in common. Maybe they're not a Christian. Maybe they're not a believer. Um, but you're still friends with them. And we can be friends with non-believers. We should be friends with non-believers. That's how we can get in and influence our world. Um, but they really probably should not be a part of our close and our inner circles because their values are different than ours. That's right. Um, that was a huge, a huge part of this um, day on day three. And then yesterday we just touched on some boundaries. We're going to really dive into that understanding what's my responsibility. And if I have responsibility over my emotions and my life and my choices, then I have to take ownership of those emotions, mm -hmm. not blame other people for how I react to them. They do what they want, but I have to be responsible for how I react. And then doing that um, <clears throat> gives us control. Mm -hmm. Taking responsibility and taking ownership gives us control of, of our lives and what we're going to do with it. And it doesn't um, bleed out into other people's. We're not taking responsibility for other people's business. And other people aren't having to take and responsibility for us, which is really a sign of maturity. A mm -hmm. mature, healthy relationship takes responsibility. <sighs> now I can take a breath. Good okay. Job. Good job. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, 
Well, let me ask you, like I like we did earlier, because y'all we were having a big conversation. Y'all weren't here, so oh, we, we said some really good stuff. It. it wasn't being taped, so we thought we'd just save it for the for now. <laughs> uh, what what do you want to say about this spheres spheres of influence? I know you talked about one of the things you teach. You teach some things about that as far as intimacy and stuff, and what what stands out to you that people need to know. What do we need to know to be better at relationships? Well, first of all, I want to say great job, Jessica. These classes are really, really good. I've been enjoying them, and, and um, I, I, I know people are growing from them and learning from them, and that's what's most important. I love this. Um, I love the thought, number one, that in the sphere of influence, the number one thing is that you and God, your relationship with God is key. And I always refer to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all the things that you need will be added unto you. That's an added benefit of making him first. So I want to stop there for just a moment and just say, first means that you're, he's your everything. It's not a cliche thing. It's not a. It's not a churchy thing. It's yeah. not a religious thing. It's not a well. I'm saved. So many hail marys. Whatever. It's not that. It's he is the most important person in my life, and I can say that above my husband, my children, my my own life, my desires. He's the most important thing. So if I believe that, then why would it be hard for me to pray to him every day? Why would it be hard for me to read his word? So I have to make sure that my life is hinged that is is hooked on him he said um i'm the vine you're the branches i want to be hooked to him i want to be his branch so if that's going to happen i have to have a real relationship with him that starts Mm -hmm. but in my classes i teach with um married folks first of all i tell them that if you and your spouse are are loving jesus together you've got the best thing going that you can possibly have you have a you have a higher percentage that your marriage is going to last because i know this about god it's 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 the way he is with me and i'm pretty sure he's like this with all his kids that when you try to tell your stuff on your husband god says okay that's fine but let's take care of you for a minute and a boundary issue. Right. So it's part of the, the system though that if you're if you're you and your spouse are loving Jesus together, then mm-hmm. you can get through that. But when we talk about communication levels, we talk about the fact that um, we know people in different ways. We have those cliche relationships, like you say, from the, the familiar people on the outside. And then we move up to those places of intimacy. So that place where your family is, that next circle, is that intimate circle. I always like to say intimacy means into me see. They're the ones who see the inside of you. Regardless of how good you look on the outside or how uh, all the things that come out of your mouth, they also see the ugly stuff. So the into me see, those are people in that next circle that are inner and then the close ones are also I guess partly intimate yeah. there as well. But um I, I this is this is how we have to work. And a lot of times we come into relationships the wrong way. We say I'm gonna date somebody, I'm gonna be with somebody um, that I just met, I don't know much about them, but I'm going to put you on a fast track because I want a relationship with you. And so I'm going to put you into this intimate place and they didn't earn the right to be in that right. intimate place. Right. No, we don't. So we don't have develop a friendship with them. We don't find out what they like, what they don't like. We don't find out about their quirks. We immediately put them into that, that yeah. um, place of, I want to get to know you all the way. And then we wonder why I'm with this Christian. It's not working. Why? Yeah. What's happening in our relationship? Yeah. But it's because you came at it in the wrong direction. Yeah, let's just be real. Not everybody that we bring into the fast track is a Christian. It's true. <laughs> Sometimes it's true. that's the one quality that we're like, oh, well, we can do that. <laughs> we I'll can do that. that. We can, yeah, and that's <laughs> not how it should work uh-uh. in any way, shape, or no. form. It will not Morning. work. It won't. Here's the deal. They might, they might, um, they might make a change. They might change. What am I trying to say? What's the word? They might convert. There you go. They might convert, and that that might actually happen, but. When you get into some real trials, they won't have roots in their relationship. And those roots really help when the, when the weather is, um, when the weather is rocky, when things are rocky in your relationship, they need to have those roots and they, they need to be about the same strength as yours is, Uh as yours are. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Bible talks about when it talks about don't be unequally yoked. yoked. It doesn't say marry a perfect person doesn't marry. It doesn't Mm -hmm. say marry, um, the most religious person, that's not it at all, but it's saying if we're equally yoked and if we're equally pursuing the same things and we're carrying the same weight and we're at the same, then we're going to pursue this together. We're going to grow together. We're going to have a deep relationship. But oftentimes, especially, I'll just speak for myself, especially the older you get, the less options you feel like you have. Mm-hmm. So the more likely we are to go, oh, they have everything else and they attend church every Sunday. So that's great. You mm-hmm. know, right. or they'll come to Wednesday night Bible study with me. So we're, I think we're good. But 
we have seen time and time again in our own lives and um, the people that we love's lives that when they marry someone that doesn't have the roots that go down deep, as soon as the rocks come, as soon as the waves come, as soon as the hard times come, it's unbalanced and they don't know what to do. And I don't even want to blame that person. Why don't we take responsibility for our actions in that and just decide that we're not going to date someone or bring someone into our life that can't handle that? I would even say that the same thing has to do with bringing people into just friendships, into that inner circle. Sometimes mm-hmm. we bring friendships all the way into the inner circle, but, but they're not Christians. Mm-hmm. They're not believers. And when we're crying to them because life, something really bad happened in our life, a death that, that's unexplainable, uh, um, a cancer, a health issue that's unexplainable, and we go to, to this person, if this person doesn't have God in their life, what's the advice that they're giving to us? Mm-hmm. Well, are they, can they pray for us? What It's an unexplainable thing. Are they going to push us away from God? Are they going to pull us and help us to go drown our sorrows and at the bar, are they going to help us go drown our sorrows um, in the next man or the next woman? Mm. Or are they going to pray with us and get on our knees? And I think it's not just relationship. That's the most important because you don't want to be in covenant with someone mm-hmm. that isn't. But it's also those friendships, too. We bring them into the wrong circles. Yeah, and our friendships, we have to be careful. I know you're going to talk about boundaries next week, Absolutely. and that'll be all um, probably part of that. But your friendships, you have to be real careful with who you bind yourself to. And the Bible says, you know, as you mentioned, not to be unequally yoked, but that's in a whole lot of different aspects. And one of those, the main points is that we need to be walking side by side, like make sure that we're we're headed in the same direction. If we're not headed in the same direction, if there will be a, there will be an overload when when the winds come, when the rains come, when those things happen, there will be an overload on us, and and we won't, one of us will be able to make it, the other one won't, or we, our friendship will, will go under uh, scrutiny, and so it'll yeah. it'll have trouble. But um, in in finding our friendships, we need to make sure that. Um, that we, if we're allowing that person to come in to get to know us, that that we are on somewhat of the same level. So, you know, like, yeah. do they love God? That's the main thing. Do they love God? If they don't love God, then why am I spending this much time with them? I need to spend some time with them, but I should not be giving them all my time because I I need to be able to have somebody that's pouring into Absolutely. me too. Two are better than one because they have more reward for their labor. And so that when one falls, the other one can pick him up. Yeah. And as you were mentioning, so where would they be whenever you fall? Yeah. Will they be there to help you to rise up? So. So instead of keeping them in our inner circle or our close circle, then let's push them to our familiar circle. Let's say, I know you. I want to spend time with you. We can go on a trip here and there, very far in between. But I can't spend most of my time with you. I'm not going to let you influence my life. Yes. Because the closer you get to the center of the circles, Mm -hmm. the more influence they have in your life. Mm -hmm. The further away, the less influence they have in your life. Mm -hmm. So you need to be mindful. We need to be intentional about our relationships. We need to be intentional about our friendships to say, these people are going to have influence on me, whether I choose to or not. So let's choose to have people of great influence. And that's a great segue to mentors. Having a mentor, and I know I slide this in in so many of our videos, but having a mentor in your life is so important. And all that is, is having finding someone, a woman, because we're women, find a woman who's doing what you want to do better than you. Mm-hmm. Who's older, maybe. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mom. I was going to say single mom. I'm not a single mom anymore. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a mom. I'm a stay at home mom. Um, work from home mom. So I need to find someone who's raised their kids. Maybe their kids are in high school and I see the fruit of their high school kids. They're in ministry. They're serving God. I need to go find them and go say, Hey, can we do lunch or something? You can tell me, how'd you do this? How'd you get through this thing? So we can pray together. They can give me good advice. Mm -hmm. Don't go find someone who's older than you, but their life's a train wreck. You don't want to follow that train wreck. You don't want to go to the gossip queen at the church. You don't want to do that. You want to find somebody who has fruitful life that children are are the fruit of their life. They're they're um, if they're in the workforce, then their then their um, recognition will show will prove what they have achieved over their life. And you can say she's a businesswoman, she's a Christian, she's serving God, she's in ministry. I need to find, I need to go seek her out and say, hey. Oftentimes, people love to share their stories. They would love. They might be busy, but they say, I'm busy. For two weeks, but in three weeks, if we put it on the calendar, I would love to have coffee with you. Mm-hmm. It's really not as intimidating as we want to make it seem. We want to share our stories. If we feel like that makes them feel good, makes them know, someone notices I'm doing something right. That feels good. And we're all, again, iron sharpens iron. We're, we're right. growing together. We mentioned, uh, if I could just insert this, yeah. on Sunday, actually, uh, Pastor Nate spoke on Sunday. And one of the things he mentioned was that, uh, that his generation, your generation, the millennials or whatever, um, have a problem with um, they need to find someone to pour into their lives mm-hmm. and that, you know, pretty well set out the, uh, the 
mandate for those of us who are older to say, you need to stop and stop and mm-hmm. pour into somebody else who's younger's life. You need to tell them your story. Yeah. So it's, he really put a, like a, a conviction upon those of us who are older to say, you know, this is what the Bible says. It says it, it, in Titus, the older women yeah. teach the younger women. And he, and he said, you know, this, forget the woman part of it. Yeah. The older people should teach the younger people. You need to tell your story. You need to help somebody else realize yeah. that, you know what, you're going through some stuff, but I've been through it too. And I'm going to show you how I did get through it. It gives them encouragement. It helps them to find hope that, you know what, I am not alone. It's been done before. It's not uncharted territory. There is territory here that that's been done. I'm going to find yeah. out what somebody's done and kind of walk yeah. that line. And it really adds value to our life. It does. It does. It does. And for our marriages, our relationships are with our kids. Everything will have value because we're we're seeking growth and we're seeking God. I think God honors that, just of like course. the Bible says, God honors that because we're being intentional. So, we're gonna wrap up today. We've been here a few minutes, and uh, would you like to pray over us this week? It's, sure. It's our Friday, so if you'll pray for us to have a good week, and then we'll see yeah. you next week. It's been my privilege to be here. I love this, and so um, I just want to pray for you, ladies, today. And we know that God is. Uh, in control of so much, but he's only in control as much as you let him have. If you don't give it to him, he can't help you with it. So let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for Jessica and for the time that she puts in so much, Lord, because she has a big heart for women. I thank you for that. I ask God that you continue to help her, Lord, to speak and teach and and influence the lives of other people. But today, Father, I pray for every woman that's watching this today. I ask God, because I know that you're so faithful to us. And when we pray, you will never cast us aside. Lord, your word tells us that you always hear our prayers, that your ears never deaf to our cries and that you always respond to us. I thank you, Lord, that that you are always watching over the righteous and your ears are attentive to their prayers. And so I pray today, Father, that you would bless each woman with the wisdom today to walk in your word, the wisdom to decide and decipher which is good and which is bad. How can I take a hold of these relationships I have? It's not just good enough to know everybody. I can know a lot of people and have Facebook friends, but there's only certain ones I want to allow to come into my life to influence me. Help me to be an influencer too. Help me to be a mentor to people that are coming into my path. Help me to to take a moment with them and buy them coffee and then tell them my testimony because we're made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so it's got to be spoken. So I pray for every woman today, whether she's older or younger, and we don't mean age, we're talking about experience in the Lord. So whether your experience in the Lord is, and you you are a, a veteran in, in your experience with the Lord, Father, I pray for that woman, God, that you help her, Lord, to be bold with her testimony and to be able to take the time with younger people and just influence and just pour in so that they can see that that they can make it too. And for the younger ones, I ask God that you would help them as they're walking their walk. They may be a 50-year-old woman and still be in a younger category just because they don't know you that well. Help that woman, Lord, to mature and put her on some sort of fast track, God, to maturity so that she learns things about you, learns things about herself, and learns things about the people that she's in relationship with. God, help us, Lord, to change our world, but in doing so, to be wise about the hours you've given us, to be wise about the people you've given us. Help us to love the those people that are around us and to speak the truth in love. And God, we ask that you would help us to walk that walk together as we grow together in you. We thank you for all these good things because every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We will see you next week. See you Monday. Bye-bye.